five Sahel has also been somewhat ironically called G five or G three Sahel or G two Sahel because there hasn't been a very cohesive um, feeling in between the states. There have also been troubles that they haven't let uh, the other countries enter uh, over the borders and, and so on. So there have been troubles even between the different countries. Um, do you see that this will change uh, with the new ACRA initiative? Ulf or Delina, is there something, do you see that there is a new uh, development or how, how should we see the new regional approaches taking place in the, in the I mean, cell? I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a positive step that uh, this ACRA initiative G5 it didn't really work out. It was 2014, you know, created or you know by the, you know, five Sahelian countries with a strong support from France, also Germany. You now with this difficult relationship with the French, so this, uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't work as a format anymore. It never really took off, you know. And also the terrorists, they've moved on. They, you know, they reached the coast now. They're doing almost you know, every week. You see attacks now in in Cote d'Ivoire and Togo or Benin. So it's good to you know integrate the uh, the coastal countries and see uh, what will happen. The key question will be what's happening in Burkina Faso. There is now that we have had just a second uh, military coup. You know the, uh, the the military is is divided. And uh, when I went uh, to, to Niger recently to to visit special forces, they also told me that the Burkina don't you know cooperate with the Nigerians anymore. For, mainly for the reason they lost control of the northern part of the country where terrorists were really, really active and it's also very sensitive to have like you know cooperation with foreign troops in Burkina Faso for him was for like Thomas um, Sankara and its legacy so that it, the whole Accra initiative will, will stand and fall with a Burkina Faso where the terrorists are based from where they are using the territory to you know go to the south to the coastal countries cooperate or not but in any case it's a good step to have the Gulf of Guinea countries involved and you know try again to set up a new new regional approach so the fact that we're already now talking about the Gulf of Guinea before um, we know that there have been expansion of, of uh, terrorist attacks or violent extremist attacks to Togo Benin during the past year um, and already now there are discussions about how to prevent that expansion further. Do we see a different future for these uh, Gulf of Guinea? Can we be more positive about the development uh, there? What do you think, Delina? I want to push back a little bit on, in, in, onto uh, something that Ulf uh, was mentioning in terms of ownership and the G5, when the G5, the joint force, was created. Um, I... I think, I mean, from from what we read of uh, how the process worked at the time, it is true that there was a strong European push to create this regional force. But the perception, I think, was that Sahelian states themselves believed that a regional solution was the solution. And yet, that wasn't enough. And, and, and I wonder why that is. And I don't think the answer is um, that there was a strong European push, but rather it was a very much internal problem in terms of in terms of trust, I mean, the Malian government trusting the Nigerian government, uh, trusting the Burkina Bé and the Chadians. So there seemed to be a Sahelian problem into even the human resources that were put into the joint force. No one was sending their best officials. No one was sending their best security officials. It seemed like there was no political will to... To, to base their own security onto the security of, of, a, of a partner country, uh, country in the region. And, of course, coup after coup, uh, I mean, the situation could only deteriorate. So I think with the Accra initiative, as with, every, as with every partnership, every military partnership, if there is no trust in the other government, uh, if there is no trust even in the stability of a partner government, I mean... If I, as a Nigerian policymaker, uh, believe that uh, the Beninois uh, are not going, that the Beninois at this present moment are not going to last another mandate, or not even their own mandate, then why would I risk sending my best people into an area that I'm not directly concerned with? Mm. And we also know that the G5 Sahel, often the, the battalions that were supposed to go to G5 Sahel, they were withdrawn or because there were national problems or there were things happening uh, on, on their own territory and all of a sudden there was then a G3. 
Um, so, so as you say, there hasn't been uh, enough trust between the different Sahelian governments to actually uh, build this G5 Sahel sufficiently and, and build the trust necessary between the countries. So we are now looking at the Accra Initiative and we're wondering if this is going to, to have a different outcome um, than G5 Sahel. And so far, we also know that there are more European interests, I would say, for the Gulf of Guinea than there has been for Mali, Niger and Burkina Faso, mostly because there are um, more commercial interests for the European states in this region. Um, do you see uh, Germany, for example, becoming more interested in developing a closer partnership with the Gulf of Guinea states um, in this regard? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a real concern, you know, Germany and other European countries, you know, if the crisis now really uh, hits uh, in full the, 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 you know, the coastal countries such as Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, Togo or Senegal, which are not just trading partners, but they're really much more stable, much more, you know, developed countries, then, then we're really talking about the stability of the whole West Africa. With Sahel, Mali, people tend to say, okay, these you know, desert countries, semi-arid, you know, they were always poor, so, I mean, that's not a big deal. But now, I mean, the real deal from European perspective, if, you know, if, if the coastal countries also get destabilized, it's, we have a real, real crisis at hand, and, you know, this will, you know, trigger new migration flows or also pose security threats. So that's, uh, that's why I think, you know, there's, there's a real alarm now in European capital what's going on, that they can't, Ignore the problem anymore on the Sahel, or really have to step up the game and really, you know, try to do as much to, you know, contain the crisis. You know, not to reach it more to the coastal countries. 